Jeepers, creepers, where'd you get those peepers? <laughs> hey there, daddy -o. I'm Mishdi Max, your scat singing dame for this 1920s flapper makeup. I got all dolled up like a bear cat in my hip to the jive glad rags to hit the keen hop with postmodern jukebox for a ring a ding ding. It doesn't take much to turn yourself into a hot tomato so you can get those dogs a moving and get to hopping and bopping. So I crammed my hair into this bizarre version of a side updo thing with fake finger waves, which is just obtained with leave-in conditioner on my naturally curly hair, and I chucked in some shiny baubles in my ears. I primed my lids with Too Faced Shadow Insurance so I can swing well into the night. I'm applying the MAC Paint Pot in Painterly with the Sigma P82 Precision Round Brush to conceal the brow bone area of my blinkers. I have another MAC Paint Pot called Black Round, and I'm applying that to my peepers with a cotton bud, starting at the lash line and blending it up towards the crease with my finger and the P82 brush to soften the edge. When I have the intensity I want and it's all smoothed out, I whipped out the Inglot No. 111 R eyeshadow and packed it onto the brow bone with the Sigma E55 eyeshading brush. Into the medium and darkest shades of that swell peach shadow on the Sedona Lace EB09 blending brush to run as a transition shade up at an angle and into the inner crook of my lamps. Using just the deepest peach color, I continue to that upwards angle. And I smooth down the brow to keep the crease low at the outer edge. I dipped that same fluffy brush into this Makeup Geek eyeshadow that's just the tops, called Cupcake, to persist with that transitional area and flesh out that triangular shape going high up into the brow at the front. I buffed the edge out with the peach shade like a cool cat and made sure I didn't go too far towards the nose by cleaning up with the lighter shadow. Now for the Makeup Geek Bitten Eyeshadow, which I'm tapping on with the Sigma E70 Medium Angle Shading Brush to further that sad blinker formation. I'm slowly building up the color on the inner crease while keeping the outer brow bone free of product. I'm keeping a round shape around the lid and wiggling some of that burgundy shadow on the inner and outer corners. I take the smaller fluffy brush to keep everything soft at the edges and swing in with some cupcake and peach so the crease is nothing less than the bee's knees. I go back in with the highlight to clean up the brow bone so nothing gets too high up on the outside. For a doe-eyed effect, I'm keeping the outer corner round and to increase that sassy style, I have the Makeup Geek Stealth Eyeshadow and the Sigma E47 Shade of Crease Brush to apply through that deep crease from outer to inner corner. I went in with Makeup Geek Corrupt Eyeshadow on the same small pointed brush to deepen that up and get some more darkness in this dramatic smoky eye. To diffuse the black and make sure it doesn't overpower that maroon shade, I went over the top with Bitten and increased the halo eye shape. And as usual, I go back in and layer the eyeshadows so it doesn't get all dingy up there. To reinforce that spotlight shape, I focused more black eyeshadow on the inner crease and blended that through with Bitten on the medium fluffy brush, using its angled shape to work that inner crook space. I'm going into my peepers with the Inglot number 450 pearl eyeshadow that's fit for a clam bake, and I'm laying that down on the inner and outer corners with the nifty Smith 253. Now I'm putting on the Ritz with Sugar Pill Pigment in Countess using that same flat brush to press it over the center of my lamps. To really make that pigment all aces, I'm tapping on some Too Faced Glitter Glue and adding another layer of the purplish burgundy shimmer smack dab onto the middle of my shutters. I ran the pointed brush through the crease to make sure everything is like eggs in coffee. And I ain't no dumb Dora, so I'm going at the outer corners with the Glitter Glue to intensify the cranberry eyeshadow as well. I kept the shimmer out of the crease with that tiny pointed cool cat without adding anything on the tip. I make sure the lid was looking snazzy and smooth with a touch more Countess pigment. Now I'm sitting pretty to refine the crease by adding a mix of Corrupt and Bitten in a hot round arc and I dived in again with the medium angled shading brush to keep Bitten visible above the socket. So it doesn't get into bug-eyed Betty territory, I turned down the brow bone with more peach eyeshadow and fluffed at the inner crook. 
I have this Inglot Matte Gel Eyeliner in number 77 that's simply the cat's pajamas, and I used it with a pointed cotton bud to coat my tight line. I dotted some of that gel eyeliner along the upper lash line and smudged it into the lashes with the other side of the cotton bud. So I don't end up like a cancelled stamp, I removed the fallout off my face with a makeup wipe. I liquefied the gel eyeliner so it will go on smoother along my waterline and I scrubbed that into my lash line with yet another swell pointed cotton bud to blacken it up along there. I whipped out that peachy keen eyeshadow to blend under the lash line for a transition using the fluffy blending brush. I mirrored the maroon shade underneath my peepers with the medium angled brush taking it low and to keep it all copacetic I blended the edges and kept the corners round with the light peach and fluffy brush. I looped the lower lash line into the socket with those crease brushes. Then I went in with Corrupt Eyeshadow and the Real Techniques Detail Brush to get a smoky eyeliner that's just the tops. I gave the lower lid the same treatment till it was the cat's meow. I topped off the inner corner with more of that sweet pearl cranberry shade, taking that across the inner third too. I used the pointed brush to buff that bitten shadow that I'm just goofy about underneath the eye and I fluffed at the edges with that black shade. I applied a fine line of Physician's Formula close to the roots of the lashes and to keep that soft I press on some more corrupt eyeshadow with the detailed brush. I curled my eyelashes and applied a thin coat of L'Oreal Telescopic Mascara. I moisturized my skin with Embryolisse Let Crème Concentré and while that soaks in I slid on back to a mix of bitten and corrupt with that pointed brush to fiddle with and escalate that inner corner crook area to get that top draw style. I'm also using that snazzy angled fluffy brush to blend it out with more bitten. Back to the face and I used Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer to prepare the skin for my customized pale doll tone. I combined Bourjois Healthy Mix Gel Foundation with a keen amount of the Body Shop Lightening Shade Adjusting Drops and pounced that into my skin with a damp beauty blender, not forgetting to take it down my neck. I mixed some of the lightening drops into my concealer for my under eyes and also covered the edges of my lip line so I can change the shape later and smushed some product into the ear that will be on show. Now don't think I'm hanging around like a dew dropper, I haven't forgot to go at my lower lashes with mascara too. Then to set my face I have Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in Ethereal Light, making sure everything is sweet and matte. I faded the eye look into the face makeup with some peach eyeshadows and the remnants of burgundy on the angled brush to blow out the lower lash line. I jiggled on some more pearl cranberry shadow on the inner corner to spruce up that section and now I'm onto the brows with the Urban Decay Brow Box in Bathwater Blonde. I'm just using the lighter powder to fill in my eyebrows in a round shape without thickening them up too much and I'm extending the tails downwards. I combed through the hairs with the NYX Tinted Brow Mascara in Blonde and extended the tails even further for some more damsel in distress sadness. I darkened up my mole with an eyebrow pencil for that oh so Hollywood look and you can add a fake one in if you don't own one already. I sprayed my face with the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray to make sure everything's Jake all night long. I have these lashes from Daiso which have longer strands in the center for that round eye style that's particularly fashionable for any hot wingding. I'm cutting them in half and removing the center so I can keep that swell shape and applying them in two pieces. I squeezed them together with my natural lashes and curled them up so these fierce lashes let him know he'll get the icy mitt if he's not careful. I disguised the glue and lash band with my eyeliner pen so they don't go all stool pigeon and fink on me. To get the full hotsy totsy effect I have the sleek blush in pink parfait and I'm applying that with the Real Techniques blush brush high up on the cheekbones and mainly focusing on the apples in a round shape. I'm building up to quite a strong color as is the style of the time. I did blend the edges out with my face powder and faded the perimeter into the skin so I don't look half seas over from too much giggle water. For some flower lover action I pulled out taco eyeshadow from Sugar Pill to lighten up the skin even more and really matte down the face. 
I melted those powders into my skin with MAC Fix Plus, and after delicately fanning, I went on to priming the lips with MAC Prep and Prime Lip Base. Stop draw! I chose MAC Night Moth Pencil to create my Clara bow-like pursed lips, keeping with the stylish round extended Cupid's bow, which tapers off into the corners, leaving the edges of the lips out of the equation, but still going for fullness on the bottom lip. I coloured in the entire shape and tightened up the edges with the concealer to get the full It Girl effect. To add a bit of moisture on top of the pencil, I have Revlon Color Burst Lip Butter in Sugar Plum and I kept everything dark by mixing a bit more of the deep burgundy pencil in there. And now I'm on the trolley. To spruce up my fake flapper hairdo, I have this black ostrich feather and I'm just shoving it down into the hair bun object and using a black and a white flower clip to secure the shaft and cover up the hair tie. Then I put on this white feather boa that I had in my stash from years ago and I'm pretty sure I bought it at a $2 shop. It sheds a bunch but does the job and shows you know your onions when it comes to style. And I'm pulling on my fancy opera length black satin gloves to coordinate with the other black elements in my getup. The dress is an old one and I have no idea where I got it, but it's a white bodycon dress with some gathered draping around the hips and bust, which is really flattering on an hourglass figure and it gives an approximation of old Hollywood glamour or flapper style when it's combined with everything else. On my dogs, I have these patent leather wingtip style gangster calf boots with knuckle dusters for the laces. I got them many years ago online and they're the Exotica 1050s from the brand Pleaser Phantasma. I'll link the website where I got them below, plus you can find them on eBay and Amazon. Now I've got to shake a leg and make tracks to the wingding. I ain't lighting up the tilt sign. I really enjoyed creating this makeup and playing with the deep seductive tones combined with the glamorous styling of the 1920s. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this top draw old school makeup tutorial and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Also check out my band and podcast on iTunes. And if you want to send me a telegram or something, I have my PO box in the description box.
Ha <laughs> ha.